talk about your uh, putting this together and how you got cast for this. You want to go first? Well, how'd you put it together? <laughs> it's right there. Um, uh, what do you mean? The, the story or the actual film itself? Both. Both. The story came about, um, I don't want to give anything away, but I, I wanted to make a, a, a horror film that was uh, kind of set in the world of a particular subgenre, which really is just the disease, infection subgenre, and, and that, that whole thing has kind of been played out and we've seen it a million times, so I wanted to do something a little differently, and recently I've been very curious in kind of exploring sex as a device for a horror film, because I think it's really familiar, and to me the best horror films are ones that you can relate to, and for the most part, I think everyone can relate to sex in some form or fashion. So that was kind of the the, the pinpoint of the idea, and it just kind of evolved from there. Um, it went through many different stages, depending on the budget and everything else, and, and uh, Matt Mercer, my co-producer, and I had really been kind of kicking around the idea, and I brought it to him, and I was like, hey, you know, I'd really love you to be in this film, and, you know, I'd love to try and get it going. And we couldn't find the money, we couldn't find the producers, and I got approached by JD and Rafi to do a film, and they were like, hey, we have no money, but we really want to make a cool movie. And I was like, great, I think I have a cool movie, and maybe I can make it for no money. So um, so basically, I refined the idea, because we originally were going to shoot it in like a foreign country and have all this weird stuff. And um, I kind of set it in L.A. and kind of the, uh, the L.A. social party scene, because I thought it was a great place to explore uh, STDs and unprotected sex. <laughs> so, uh, so I met Najara at a party one night, and we had this random hookup. And then I was like, wow, I'm kidding. This is all lies. This is all lies. Um, and, uh, and Matt Mercer uh, was like, Ew. no, rock on. Um, Matt Mercer, we were looking for uh, Samantha, and Matt Mercer was like, hey, I have this really great actress that I know and I've worked with before, and her name's Najara, and she's amazing. And I was like, okay, great, send me your stuff. And he sent me your stuff, and I was like, oh, wow, she's everything you said. And then I'll let her take over. Um, and then Matt Facebooked me. And just um, gave me the synopsis and asked me if I wanted to come in. Um, and I asked for the script, and he said the director's really protective over the script and wouldn't give it to me. So um, he's Woody Allen. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I went in and I got a callback, and at that point I got to read the script, which is kind of like when I fell in love with the idea. That's when we were scared we were gonna lose her. Excuse and, me. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> Rock on, man. Um, yeah, the total opposite happened. I really, really wanted to be involved in it. Um, so call back, and then Matt called me made, and made sure like my schedule was open, and then then we met at a like, few coffee days later. Yeah, we met at coffee bean. <laughs> Yeah. And they offered it to me. We, we, we met to make sure, like, the chemistry was there because, you know, you really have to kind of trust someone making a movie like this. And yeah. and we hit it off right away. And she, Matt already knew her, and, and Najar and I clicked right away. So it was just one big happy family. Yeah. Well, you know, the main thing I thought about, I was I just didn't like to see her be all beautiful and get gross like that. Right? Oh! <laughs> me either. <laughs> Man, and every time, now how did you do the eyes? How did you guys do the eyes? Uh, which part of the eyes? All of them. The, <laughs> the, the <laughs> red, the, I mean, did you put we stuff had, in your eyes? Yeah, I had red contacts and eye blood. And then when oh. my eye like went totally dead, they put a sclera lens in my eye, which is like like half your eyeball, and they have to like shove it, it wow. pops in. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of an ordeal. So yeah. was makeup like a huge challenge for you guys while filming? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, doing, I've done horror films in the past, and it's like you always try to schedule around the makeup and the blood and the stuff, but this was the first movie where I think, we shot in 15 days, and I think oh, maybe yeah. 11 of them were makeup days, and she was in makeup for like three hours a day. Um, so it was really a massive process, and, and you know, tough on her, because it's like you have to find your performance through the makeup, and all that stuff but you know some of those contacts you can't really see through so she was half blind and and the actual eye blood that you drop in it's, it's a safe blood for your eye but it dissolves after like 30 seconds so she'd have to put new drops in every take so you know it was challenging for her to find the balance and then it was challenging for me to say all right do I want to wait another few minutes for this to happen or like do can I live with what I have so it was a logistical challenge and then as the movie progresses you know it, we had our character in sunglasses, so then that became a challenge of like, okay, we're saving time on makeup, but you know, can she get her performance through? And it, it was just every, it felt like every idea we had was just kind of pushing us more to a corner, and we had to figure our way out of it. Well, the whole thing about BJ for me, <laughs> BJ, where I, yeah, me, me and BJ, I don't know what it is, but but the thing about it, 
he would have answered for me what was going on with her. Then I could have got into it a little bit more because, like I said, was she a vampire or, or, or she had some kind of disease that man didn't know about? Yeah. And the way it ended, I figured if it was done a little differently, you might have a sequel on your hands because, I mean, it's the kind of story that um pull you in, but you want to see what happens next. Well, that's kind of... We've actually had a lot of people say they want to see a sequel. I mean, I, I think I think the point for me of the movie was to be ambiguous, to ask that question of what is she becoming. I, I think it's... For me, it's clear, but the purpose was to never say entirely what she's becoming so that, you know, you can kind of draw your own conclusions and kind of piece it together. And because you didn't do... BJ, <laughs> hey. man, that guy answers a lot of questions. I mean, if you do a sequel, it really should be about him. I know, because BJ was a. Well, see, the problem was we had a really big actor, and we couldn't afford to put his face in the movie. So oh. we should. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> talk hey, about the I'm, I'm talk going. about the creative aspects of stuff because this is interesting when it comes as a filmmaker, but this is also challenging as an actress too because. Did you really sign up to put everything in your eyes and stuff like that? Because I always get a kick out of that. My eyesight is going bad from watching, you know, 25 years of bad movies. As I see it. So I can only imagine Sorry, what you feel like. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when I read the script, it, it, it was just exciting. And like, ooh, this is going to be so cool. But I guess I didn't think about, um, <laughs> like, actually putting myself through it. And luckily we had like the most amazing special effects makeup artist and she made everything like comfortable and it wasn't even like I do not touch my eyes I wear like glasses to drive and contacts are like a no-no for me but she made it like easy they they would they put the sclera lens in in for me so I didn't have to touch it and it was it wasn't that would it be just trippy wasn't for me bad. so I've always got a kick out of special effects and people's eye changing yeah Especially seeing Walking Dead and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. So. yeah. How, how much fun is that as you for a filmmaker to do all that? It's it's always fun to kind of conjure up the ideas and, and think about it, but then it's always a pain in the ass when you get on set and you're like, all right, how, how much longer till we can shoot? And you're like walking up to the makeup and it's like they're putting on the veins and they're putting on this and it's like, all right, she looks great, let's go. You know, so it's like it's always that balance of like creative and, and logistic, you know, because it's like you want to get it the best you can, but at the same time, it's so tough. I always have this saying where it's like, I don't want her to look so good that I can't get it on camera, which means like, you could sit there and do her up so much and make her look like a masterpiece, but then we run out of time and it was all for nothing because we don't get it on camera. So it's it's so much fun when it works, and then if you schedule it right, you get a ton of time to play with it. But for me, it was so much fun just seeing her in the makeup and seeing her the way she was acting. and It was kind of a, a nightmare while shooting because there were so many times where I'm like, man, I really hope this movie works or no one's going to buy it. You know, it's like, because there were some times where she's on set and she's like interacting with someone and she just looks so fucked up and so messed up. And I was like, God, I really hope the context of this works, you know. And so far it, it has, you know, so people are seeming to enjoy it. So it, it's, it's nice when it works. Well, what was it like for you to be a lead in a movie where you carry the entire movie? I mean, are, are you thinking this could be a career move or whatever? Because who knows? It might be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I luckily didn't stress about it too much. I just, I was just, a, it was so much fun. I just had a blast doing it. So it, I, I didn't even realize at the time how much of it's on my shoulders. I guess maybe not even until I saw it. <laughs> um, that I realized I was like, oh, I'm kind of in every scene. Yeah, how did I not realize this? Um Luckily, we just had fun. We had an amazing crew. Because when I see movies like this of basically a new or an unknown starlet, it's movies like these that usually serve as the launching pad. Because most directors I talk to, they say, well, we saw her in this little uh, small indie movie, and man, she was so great there. That, uh, so I don't know, that might happen for you. <laughs> I know. Hey. This time next year, she's not going to return my call. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the fun part about championing a lot of unknowns for a certain project because you just never know what hits. And that's the fun part. Yeah. Because normally 
you'll never see two black guys. There's only two of us that do this. That's left. I don't. Know. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I'm gonna kidding. pull up my phone and start calling some people right now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. But in general, you know, there's there's a, there's a lot, but sometimes it's just hard to get everybody out. So that's one reason, as a non filmmaker, a non screenwriter, but a producer host, I champion the cause of doing that of what goes in. Cool. And I came out of the home video days. It was me and. Quentin Tarantino and Kevin Smith. We're the yeah. ones who came out of that, and there's no more video stores. Yeah. So we like to see stuff like this, because you never know yeah. what happens to people. And then you say, oh, I remember that black guy. He, he interviewed me with his little flip camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that. So that's that's an important thing. Talk about the filmmaking process again. And uh, you said 15 days to 15 do it? 15 days, yeah. How much money did you finally get? Oh, man, my producer will kill me if he's here. Um, I can't say on record, unfortunately, but... Um, not a lot. <laughs> it was it was a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, um, and like probably the price of a used SUV. <laughs> um, and uh, and I mean just the the logistics, the filmmaking side of it was just so it was a whirlwind process because I I wrote the script in um, I want to say like March maybe, and we were filming in May, so it was just a super super quick turnaround. And uh, the movie was experimental in almost every sense of the word because this was, you know, my smallest film, essentially, um, and, and the shortest shoot time and, and everything. Like, everything was just really an experiment. I wrote the roles for, for people that I knew. She and uh, Caroline, uh, Caroline Williams, who plays her mother, uh, were the only two actors that I hadn't met, you know, uh, or worked with in some capacity um, before the film. So everyone that's in the movie I pretty much knew or had a relationship with and... I wrote around locations that I knew I had access to, so it was really kind of a, in a, in a horrible way of putting it, kind of a backyard home movie in, in a lot of ways. Like we, we were just filming at you know our friends' houses and stuff like that. You get the record for a quickest writing turnaround in the history of the business. <laughs> Thank you, you do. I mean, Thank the quickest you. turnaround for a big budget movie is two years, and that was for Steven Spielberg's Lincoln. Yeah. For an independent, you, you've just broken the record. Oh, well, thank that. you. That's never happened before. Wow, that's incredible. And I've talked to all those people from IFC and everybody. Yeah. Never. Wow. We'll take that. Would we get like an award or something? <laughs> <laughs> and you got, and you got to know, just that's a quick turnaround. Yeah, it no, does it's, not it's happen really fast. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, we actually had, I, I hate admitting this, but we actually had a press release go out announcing the film with the synopsis and everything before we had the script. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Well, you're not the only do one doing that, but now, yeah. when you're in a situation like that, does that give you validation of, uh, does that attest to your skills? Because you really have to have it together to pull a situation off like that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nerve-wracking. You know, I, I try, I, I think you can't, Okay, sorry, shit. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think we'll get, we'll get BJ on her. Yeah, right. He'll, he'll go do something to her. Um, uh, that sounded horrible. Um, I think you can't you can't be a filmmaker without having a, a level of confidence in knowing your abilities and knowing what you're doing. You know, and and that's what I tried to bring to to this movie. You know, was because it was essentially my third feature, so I really wanted to um, try a lot of things that I hadn't done before. But it, it was also nerve wracking at the same time of, of feeling like I had to live up to something. Kind of releasing the synopsis of this is what this movie's going to be about before we had written it, before you know we had done anything like that. So there was definitely a nervousness of you know trying to to. I think live up to something, but at the same time, you know, there's people who are gonna who, who are gonna hate this film, and they're like, yeah, it's a half baked idea. You didn't have time to flesh it out. You didn't have time to do this. So there's there's two sides to that coin, and I'm fully aware of it. But I think for us, we were just so determined, and I had had this movie kind of stewing around in my head that I was prepared to kind of lay it all out on the table because. I didn't want to write the script until I knew we had the money ready to make the movie because it was such a small budget that one, personally, I couldn't afford to take time to write it on spec and then it fall through and then I'm fucked. But two, we had s such a little budget that I had to write around resources that I knew I had access to. So I was literally gathering things to put into the movie as we were going. So it was kind of a necessity. Did, did you purposely select such an attractive actress so then when she did start to go down, it because that really had an effect on, yeah. on me. I'm like, damn, how much ugly has she got to get? This girl's fine. Yeah, I know. She's gorgeous, right? <laughs> yeah, so, man. So my, my whole thing, and I told Najara this, and she's probably going to slap me, so I'm going to prepare. Um, the whole process of making this movie, I'm not going to say anything bad. The whole process of making this movie, um, I was like, my the goal for making this movie is to see guys and girls, how long they can go in the movie before they're finally like, all right, I wouldn't have sex with her anymore. Wouldn't do it. 
Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't wouldn't chance it. Cause that that for me was the whole thing. Was you want to this girl's beautiful and you want to you you want to go with her. You want to be involved with her. So it's like, how far can we take it before you're finally like? <laughs> no condoms and nothing. Like I'm just not doing it. I'm not gonna touch it. But obviously for Riley, that's not the case because he's yeah. he's down for whatever. Well, you know, traditionally the prettiest girls are always in the horror film. I know. It's like the the letter face and all that crap. <laughs> all, he always got to kill somebody that look like a playboy. In my I know. Like, yeah. We're flipping it this time. <laughs> Which is harder to do, your, your third feature or the first one? I think every movie, it's it's its own battle. It's its own challenge. It's, I like to tell people that, that making movies is kind of like raising kids. Like you can you can put all your kids in the same school and feed them the same stuff every day, but they're all going to grow up to be different people, and they're all going to have their own challenges. So you know, making your first movie is tough because you're trying to prove to people that you can do it. <clears throat> but depending on the level of success or whatever of your first film, then you have to prove to people that you can continue doing it or continue topping it. So I think I think they're all tough, you know. But with this one particularly, it was a challenge for me because, like I said, it was my smallest film and all the, the logistical challenges. But, you know, my first film had it, its own problems. But I, I would definitely say that, you know, each film that you continue doing, I think personally it's harder for yourself as you continue going because I think if you're not pushing yourself, you're not doing it right. But you know, uh, hopefully logistically it kind of gets easier, you know, if you have some success, people will hand you money for your next movie and you're not, you know, robbing banks and stuff. <laughs> what, is, what is your next project coming up and what's your next project coming up? Uh, my next film, I'm attached to a few things. Uh, the first one I have is called Hellbent and it's a really, really cool script uh, from a writer named TJ Simfel based out of Chicago and uh, it's, it's set entirely inside of a mine and it's about uh, a mining accident that goes wrong and these miners under these demonic entities that are below the surface and it's really really great timeless classic horror story and then uh, I'm working on a horror comedy that I'm gonna start shooting here in a few months um, in Oregon